Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, my tea story. This video is gonna be a very different kind of video. I'm just gonna be giving you my background and how I got into tea. This video is not gonna go under any playlist, but if at any point in time you enjoy this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are gonna come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then go click that button. As I said, this video is gonna be a very different kind of video and I promise you that normal services will resume with proper tea videos coming up very soon. But so many of you have asked me to do a video about myself and about how I got into tea, which is something that I was quite reticent to do because this channel is really about spreading true tea culture and tea knowledge. But enough of you have asked, so here we are. I'm going to give you a little bit of background about how I became obsessed with tea. Before we begin, I am drinking here a Royal Peach Orchid or uh, Milan Siang Dansong. So this is Milan Siang Dansong. I'll put a link in the description below and a little card will pop up up here so you can um, find out more about this tea. And it has a significance in the story, which I'll get to later on, but it's one of my favorite teas. So I'm gonna be drinking this, and I hope that you're drinking tea with me, so cheers. Um, if not, push pause, put the kettle on, and uh, have, a, have a cup of tea with me, or start a gong fu session. Okay, so my journey into tea, or my tea story, really started before I was born. In the late 60s, my father, who was Chinese, he came from Guangdong province, he moved over to London to study physics at King's College. He was a physicist. And uh, he met my mother in Europe, and my mother is Swiss. She comes from the Swiss-German part of Switzerland, so I'm half Swiss, half Chinese. And uh, they met, they fell in love, and they got married. In 1972, they started a business. The business was called East Asia Company, and it was a bookshop. And the purpose of the bookshop was to disseminate and, and uh, act as a bridge between East and West to bring Chinese culture and Far Eastern um, philosophies and arts to the West. Um, and so this bridge between East and West, which is a theme which has um, spread out over the last 40, over 40 years, um, started with the East Asia Company. They um, were running this bookshop, I was born, and then um, my father became really interested in Chinese medicine, was bringing in a lot of books about Chinese medicine, and began to study Chinese medicine. And eventually he became a professor in Chinese medicine. And in the early 70s, uh, him and my mother opened um, another business, which was the first Chinese medical clinic uh, and organization, I think, in Europe. And the name of that uh, business is Acumedic. So Acumedic um, still exists today. It is the oldest and largest Chinese medical um, clinic, um, I believe, in Europe, certainly in the UK. So um, I was born and brought up all around Chinese medicine. Um, and I saw the business grow and uh, popularity towards Chinese medicine uh, increased and more and more people were interested in acupuncture and in Chinese herbs, um, and the business grew from there. Um, and my father's approach always was integration, integration, integration. Chinese medicine is not about an alternative medicine, it's about a complementary medicine. It's about um, working with its advantages to help public health um, and uh, working with Western medicine um, in harmony to try and create an even better medicine. So it's about integration and everything in my family has always been about integration and bridging East and West. So I was brought up in this environment having acupuncture as a child, um, uh, drinking Chinese herbal medicine despite its taste um, to make sure that I stayed fit and strong. When I finished uh, my high school, um, I went and I studied in the States. I went to New York and I lived in New York for four years studying at Tisch School of the Arts, NYU, and I studied film and television. And uh, whilst I was there, I, um, well, even before I w went to NYU, I was obsessed with music. And so it was always a difficult choice between um, film and music. And while I was studying film, I started to really 
uh, decide that I was more interested in music and sound. And so I was working in sound productions um, in, at Tisch School of the Arts. And when I came back to London after my uh, graduation, um, I started to work in sound studios and I taught myself to become a sound engineer. So I was working in the London uh, sound studio uh, circuit, working as a freelance sound engineer. I then became a producer and I started to produce music. I then started a record label and I um, became a producer myself. So I was writing my own music and I was releasing music from other artists and I started to DJ. So music was my world. I was going out, traveling around the world, uh, DJing um, and producing, and I spent my life either in studios or in clubs. I kind of realized that that didn't have a very long future. Um, I didn't want to be kind of 40, 50 years old um, and never see the sunshine. Um, and um, I was working maybe one or two days a week in the family business, helping out, um, mostly dealing with kind of graphic design work um, and just helping my parents to keep the business running and, and to keep it flourishing. And I started to become more and more interested in Chinese medicine and also um, just natural remedies and I became interested in Eastern philosophy and uh, you know it, this, this heritage that um, has been around me for my whole life really in my mid-20s started to kind of kick in and I started to become more and more interested in it until one fateful day when I was having a discussion with my father and I said to him you know what we should do we should start to maybe import some tea um, and I had no passion about tea really I didn't really know anything about tea at this point um, but I felt that it was a really nice bridge, an another bridge, another ramp to help people to understand uh, Chinese philosophy and Chinese medicine. Now, most people who come to a Chinese medical clinic who go and seek acupuncture, or a lot of them at least, um, come because it's a last kind of desperate effort to or attempt to get better. Uh, many times they come because Western medicine has failed them or let them down and they have nothing else to lose so they come in and walk through our doors for treatment which is great but you know Chinese medicine is so wonderfully adept at uh, helping people with sub health people who um, are not necessarily at that kind of point of desperation but are just you know feeling we're all we all have you know things that uh, uh, we can improve on in our health so preventative health care and helping to kind of um, stop um, problems becoming more chronic problems was something that Chinese medicine has a real uh, ability to help with um, and yet people are not were not taking advantage of that and I felt that bringing tea to the business um, was a nice way to get people into the shop to, is a nice gateway for people to experience um, tea proper tea and don't forget that tea really is one of the first Chinese herbal medicines so it was a kind of way to introduce people in a soft way to Chinese medicine. My father agreed. He said it was a good idea. And so he said, well, why don't you go out and start to learn about tea? Um, so I thought I would do that. And I thought that I would probably spend a couple of months um, just kind of learning about tea and getting a few teas in. Obviously, for those tea heads out there, you know that once you start the journey, that's something that is just going to be a passion for the rest of your life. And so what I did was I um, asked my father for his contacts. Now, don't forget that we had been importing Chinese herbal medicine for at this point. So this was kind of early 2000s, 2003, 2004. So we had been importing Chinese herbal medicine for over 30 years at this point. So we had a vast network in China of uh, farmers and herbal producers that were growing Chinese herbs. And we were working with them in terms of terroir, in terms of making sure it was grown and harvested at the right time. And so I was really fortunate because when I wanted to get into tea, I had this very big network in China 
um, to draw from to try to get good tea. And they all recommended farmers around them that produced tea. And so some samples started to arrive and I started to travel to China to taste. And for every tea head, there is a moment that you, uh, that a moment in your life that just transforms your approach or your, your opinion about tea. And for me, it was, for, as for many other people, a Tie Guan Yin. So an Iron Goddess. I had obviously tried Iron Goddess before, but there was one sample that I tried. Um, it was actually a gift that was given to my father. So by this point, my father had reached um, a quite high status um, in Chinese society because he had kind of pioneered Chinese medicine uh, in Europe. And, uh, and you know, he continued to be a very, very well-known name in Chinese medicine. For those of you who want to uh, look him up, my father's name was uh, Professor Man Fong Mei. Professor Man Fong Mei. So if you Google him, then you will find out a little bit about him. But he was a real pioneer um, around the world in Chinese medicine. So he was being given a lot of really amazing gift tea. And uh, so I was sampling teas from various areas in China. And at the very beginning, you know, he gave me some of his collection um, of gifts. And I tasted a Tie Guan Yin, a superior iron goddess that just blew me away. The, the creaminess of it, the floor, the combination of floral and creamy and grassy all together in one, just, just really lit up my imagination. I thought, wow, if tea can be like this, then I need to explore more. And I remember the second real revelation moment for me was tasting a Yunnan Dian Hong, so a Yunnan golden black tea. Just the smoothness and the texture of it. I remember, you know, tasting this sample and just thinking, hold on a minute, there's something really, really amazing that is so different from every other tea that I had tasted before. Now, I had been brought up in the UK, you know, with Chinese tea, but not very good Chinese tea around me, and a lot of builder's brews, a lot of milky uh, um, tea bag teas. So for me, this was a real eye-opening experience. So from there, I started to really want to travel to China to learn more about these really high-end teas. And so I went and I studied and I studied and I studied. And in 2007, I decided that I would like to open a tea house. Um, and we called that tea house China Life. Now, the reason why it was called China Life was the concept behind China Life was not just about tea. It was also about just bringing Chinese lifestyle um, solutions to healthy modern living to the West. So things like tea, herbal skincare products, um, herbal tonics, um, things that you could easily incorporate into your daily life that would make your life easier, better, healthier, and for you to perform uh, to a higher level. So that's why we called the uh, brand China Life. We opened up China Life um, right next door to Acumedic Clinic, and it's uh, still positioned there today as Mayleaf, right next door to Acumedic Clinic. Um, and that was in 2007. So since 2007, I've been working full time, involved in Chinese medicine and in tea and in all of the China Life products, so skincare products um, and herbal tonics. Um, but my obsession with tea grew and grew and grew. Until um, we reached a point where I felt that China Life needed to be split up and there to be a brand that was specifically dedicated to tea and that has now become Mayleaf. All of the skincare products that we were um, producing, we um, completely reformulated um, and I created another brand called Sinensis Skincare. I'll put a link to Acumedic and I'll put a link to Sinensis Skincare below so you can know more about those two brands. So those are two other businesses that I am a director of. Um, and um, so we split off the skincare and that became Sinensis Skincare. And I uh, set about trying to find a brand name for tea and that became Mayleaf. Um, so this was the background for, for how Mayleaf came about. In 2014, in January 2014, my father very suddenly passed away whilst traveling 
Uh, it was a, a huge, obviously, hammer blow to me. It was a big changing point in my life. Um, and um, I took over the entire business. So now I'm the director of Acumedic Clinic. Um, bear in mind that I have been working at Acumedic for, at this point, about 15 years already. So I knew the business very well. Um, and um, I was heavily involved in a lot of the political aspects of Chinese medicine, trying to um, you know, be an ambassador for Chinese medicine. My father was that, and I've taken on uh, his role. So I'm also the vice uh, chairman of the World Federation of Chinese Medicine. I'm also the chairman of the Chinese uh, Medical Council in the UK. Um, I'm also the chairman of the Chinese Medical Institute and Register, which is a, a medical institute that teaches Western uh, doctors um, in Chinese medicine. So I'm involved in courses, in teaching, trying to, again, um, act as a bridge between East and West to try and uh, bring the best of the East to the West in order to try and, um, you know, bring about new paradigms in medicine and health. Um, and so we've been training GPs, doctors, surgeons, nurses in Chinese medicine. So the CMIR, again, I'll put a link in the description below. I'm the chairman of the CMIR. So I've taken on a lot of uh, the work that I was doing before, but my father was really kind of the, the spearhead of, um, and I'm uh, a big ambassador for Chinese medicine. Um, and so here we are now, um, three, nearly three years since my father passed away. Um, I am running all of these businesses. Um, so for those of you who think that I just do tea, it's not the case. Um, I've got four or five other brands that I'm working on at the same time, but tea is my absolute passion. Um, and I hope that you guys know that tea is, 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 is everything to me. Um, and um, it's playing an integral part in the whole project of what we're trying to do with all of the brands. So that is my journey into tea. Um, a lot of people have also asked um, my relationship with Celine. Um, and I know this is something that um, some of you are curious about. Perhaps a lot of you are not, but for those of you who are curious about this, um, Celine started working um, at China Life in pretty much just after it opened. So around 2007, 2008, I think she started working and we've been working together um, for, well, nearly 10 years now. Um, and about 2011, so, uh, so that's five years ago, Celine and I started to go out. So we were friends for, for five years before um, and we, our shared passion for tea brought us closer together um, and we started to go out with each other um, in 2011. And now we are to present day and in 2015 we got married. So Celine is actually my wife um, and we got married in 2015. So for those of you who were interested, Celine is actually my wife, but I felt that it was very reductive to just present her as my wife because she is a real tea head and she's been working in tea for over 10 years. So just to kind of bring her in as my wife, I felt was really reductive and wasn't really fair uh, to her. Um, and so um, now you know. And the significance behind this tea, Royal Peach Orchid or Milan Siang Dansong, is that this is the tea that we used at our wedding ceremony to do a tea ceremony um, for our um, future in-laws. So for those of you who don't know, it's very traditional in Chinese marriages to do a tea ceremony for the bride and groom to, to, to do a tea ceremony and present tea to their future in-laws. Their drinking of the tea uh, marks their acceptance of you into their family. So we wanted to, to continue this tradition and we picked Milan Xiang Dan Song because it's one of our favorite teas. Also because it comes from Guangdong province, which is where my father came from. So it was uh, to pay respect to him too. Um, so this is why this tea is very close to my heart. And, you know, I think that I would like to end this video just on that note that tea for me is not just a drink. It's not just about all the knowledge and the artistry and everything that we talk about in this channel. But when I say spread the word, 
about True Tea. It's not just about spreading the culture. It's about bringing people together. And I think that tea has a way of bringing like-minded people together in a really wonderful way. And it has an ability to, um, to remind you of the important things in life. And, you know, we know that the world is crazy. Um, we know that there's so much craziness and awful things that are happening out there. Um, and I really truly believe, and I, may, I know that this may be very idealistic and it may be um, uh, maybe a little bit simplistic, but I really do truly believe that when you start to explore tea, there's something that changes in people. Um, there's a mindset that changes. There's a, a kind of timelessness that changes. There's a, a relinquishing of the ego that, that happens when you start to get into tea. Um, and I really think that spreading tea culture is not just about trying to get people to drink more, but actually it's about, about making people reflect on the important things in life, um, hopefully m taking them away from all the craziness, the absurdity, and the nonsense that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and bring people together and who knows bring relationships together uh, and i know that probably a lot of you out there have some really strong relationships um, around tea and i would love to hear about them i've given you my story so i would love to hear your story down in the comments section below if you have uh, any relationships that have been formed over tea where you have felt that tea has brought about changes in your life that you couldn't have done without this magical leaf. That's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then please give the video the thumbs up, check out our YouTube uh, channel and let us know if there are any videos that you would like us to make. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions or comments, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don May from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from the tea bags, keep drinking the good stuff, and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.